Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe below so we can expand our Squatch search with your help. If you do have an encounter story, send it to SoCal Sasquatch Organization at gmail.com. State, Idaho. County, Bonner County. Location details from Sandpoint North on Highway 95, 18 miles. <clears throat> East on Elmira Road, follow to end. Changes into Forest Service type road, follow about 2 miles. Left at Fork, Bloom Lake about 5 miles further. Nearest town, Sandpoint, Idaho. Nearest road, Logging Road, Elmira Road, Highway 95. Observed. I imagine one could make up a Bigfoot story if they wanted to, but I doubt one could make up the scenario that led to my encounter. During the early 90s, I wanted to live like Grizzly Adams, and I moved to a remote wilderness in northern Idaho. <coughs> To give an idea of how remote of an area this was, the Forest Service Road just past our place was gated off to protect grizzly bears. Only a handful of people lived in this area spread out over a dozen 24-acre properties. Everything else was just extreme wilderness. The night of my encounter, meeting Bigfoot was the last thing on my mind, and I must say I was confused by what I saw as well as being left utterly speechless. Although I had grown up in Northern California and was familiar with Bigfoot lore, I had pretty much filed it away as a neat story, but not something to believe in. When you are broke and living on a mountain, there is not much to do except get together with neighbors and <clears throat> have a good time. <clears throat> Our lot was no different. I must add that during this time of my life, drinking was not big on my list. And this evening was no different. However, it was Halloween and I had had some beer earlier in the evening between 5 and 8 p.m. or so. Please remember, though, that I was weighing in at 240 pounds and the actual sighting was well into the night. Probably around 11 p.m. to 1 a.m. the following morning. So anyway, my ex and I were at the Halloween party and had slipped into our normal silent argument routine. So needless to say, we were not talking. One of the neighbors had arrived with a tractor pulling a trailer loaded with straw in hopes of taking everyone on a hayride. Eventually, we left on the hayride. There were around 16 of us ev evenly made up of adults and children of all ages, costumes and all. <clears throat> Upon leaving, I don't think we had a destination in mind. But someone eventually suggested we head to Bloom Lake, a small mountain lake with rough access that would require leaving the tractor at the logging road and walking the remaining half mile or so. As stated earlier, my ex and I were giving each other the silent treatment and found ourselves drifting to the back of the 2x2 two two line. Eventually, we had allowed enough space to develop between us and the pack to lose sight of them as they went around bends in the trail. As we neared the lake, the trail forked into two directions. Both led to the lake. My ex and I were just close enough to see the backside of the last person headed down the trail to the right. As we came to the fork, I was closest to the center fork while my ex was outside on the far right. Right as we approached the intersection, I focused on a being crouched down at the base of a tree where the trails come together. This animal stayed put while I tried to figure out what I was seeing. It felt like total slow motion. I had a visual on the animal. I was staring right at it. 
However, the animal did not seem to be interested in eye contact. Just as we passed by and the animal was to my left behind me, I looked over my shoulder to see it rise silently next to the tree it had been crouching next to. Being 6'3", I would guess this being to be about 8 feet tall. Standing now, this animal still did not want to make eye contact and kept us in its peripheral vision. I looked forward and I could still see the back of the last person ahead of us. I wanted to yell out to everyone but figured it not the best thing to do. I doubt that I was close enough to touch it but am quite sure he could have reached me without taking a step. I thought that I should say something to the ex but I was speechless. I looked over my shoulder again to see this animal take a huge silent step out of the brush and then take only two or three more up the trail we had come down before being out of sight. These steps were large, silent and punctuated with his long arms swinging with his strides. I spent many years wondering how no one else saw this and never told anyone from that night except the ex about it. I was fam familiar with forest wildlife and had viewed several species at length before this. I have always consoled myself by saying I am not sure what I saw but I do know what I didn't see and it wasn't a bear, elk, mountain lion, moose or anything else I can think of. Even after this encounter I still thought most of the TV shows were jokes but finding your, sh your show, your site, helps me realize I did see Bigfoot. This area of Bonner County, Idaho is very close to the encounter told of in the Pack River area. It is also close to the Clark Fork area encounters, kind of between the two of them. I always wondered what Bigfoot thought about 16 people coming down the trail at this time of night, costumes and all. This area is remote. 16 people at any time would have been a shock. He must have been surprised. Also noticed, do not recall, other witnesses, about 16, they missed it, I kept quiet. Other stories. I lived in this area around six years. In that time, I viewed large footprints in snow, mud, and soft shoulder soil. I visited another nearby lake, foot access, one time, and upon reaching the top of the trail, found a large scat pile and could smell the rankest odor. I felt like I was not alone and headed home immediately. From time to time I would hear shrieks in the forest around my cabin. I was usually very angry dealing with my ex and these things would just get filed away as something to worry about later. I had actually forgotten most of these until reading your site. Time and conditions around midnight, full moon, good light, cool temps, maybe a breeze, environment, small mountain lake, Evergreen forest, minimal hardwood, small primitive campsites around lake. Follow-up investigation report by BFRO investigator Charles Lamica. I interviewed the witness telephonically and found his story to be credible. Some additional information gleaned during the interview is listed below. Of the night of his sighting, the witness said Bigfoot was the furthest thing from my mind that night. He had heard of Bigfoot before this event, but had never given the subject any serious thought. There were half a dozen families that lived in the area at the time. They sometimes got together for special occasions. On the night of this sighting, they were celebrating Halloween. One neighbor brought a tractor and a large trailer for the purpose of giving everyone a hayride. In spite of it being late October, the weather was warm and clear. The moon was full or almost full on that night and the visibility was excellent. The witness says that upon seeing this figure, he immediately knew it wasn't any kind of animal he had ever seen before. He said, I immediately got confused 
by what I saw. I was speechless. He says he was so close to the the figure that the creature could have reached out and touched him. He estimated the distance between them was less than six feet. He says he didn't feel threatened, but the very closeness of the encounter made him feel it would have been unsafe to do anything but keep quiet and keep walking. As he walked past the creature, he saw it rise up and walk away. The creature made no noise. It took three or four steps before going out of sight amongst the vegetation. The witness says the entire encounter lasted about ten seconds, but the bright moonlit and the close proximity gave him a very good look at the creature. In describing the appearance of the creature, the witness said it did not have the same appearance as the Sasquatch seen in the Patterson Gimlin film. He indicated that the figure he saw looked very much like the images of Gigantopithecus shown on the BFRO website. He says that in the moonlight, the overall color of the creature was a grayish silvery color. The hair seemed to be six to eight inches long. It was very sparse on the face and he could see the facial skin was darker than the surrounding hair. It had a flat nose. He couldn't see any ears due to the hair covering the sides of the head. He says he never saw the creature's feet. The torso was broad. He described the creature as having a lean, but not lanky, yet muscular build. The witness brought up two specific points that he found quite interesting. The first is that the creature was totally silent. Even when it stood up and walked away, it made no noise. The second point was that the creature never looked directly at him. It seemed to keep its head turned just far enough away that it had to use its peripheral vision to watch the witness. The witness is positive the creature he saw was not a human. He said he chose not to discuss the event with anyone until many years later. I taught a wilderness survival class to search and rescue volunteers at Bloom Lake in May 2009. The area, area certainly has the necessary requirements of food, water, and shelter. Bigfoot Idaho Report Number 57784, Class Bravo, Location Details, A few miles south from Millard City, Idaho on I-15 is a rest stop the Cherry Creek rest stop on the mountainside of the freeway. My report is from that rest stop. Nearest town, Millard City, Idaho nearest road, I-15 observed, while traveling from Harriman UT to Rexburg, Idaho, I stopped for the night at the Cherry Creek rest stop off I-15 just before Millard, Idaho. I parked in the truck area as close to the mountain and as far from the restrooms as I could. I fell asleep in my pickup camper shell approximately 10 p.m. at 11 p.m. something woke me up. I sat up and looked around and saw nothing out of order. I could see very well due to the rest stop lights. I saw one big rig parked in the truck area and no cars at all. The truck may have awakened me when he pulled in. I laid back down and few minutes later I heard brush breaking a couple of hundred yards up the hill. I thought it must be a bear or an elk. Ignoring the breaking brush I tried to go back to sleep then while still awake I heard a clear distinctive wood knock, very clear like a bat on an oak tree. I listened for another half hour or so and heard occasional brush breaking, I then fell asleep. I was then awakened at approximately 3 a.m. by breaking brush that sounded much closer than before, followed by one clear knock from uphill and north of me 10 seconds or so later another clear knock further up the hill but to the south, two separate locations, I got up a little freaked out and drove north to Millard, Idaho also noticed, no. Other witnesses, just me. Other stories, no I inquired the next day in Millard and the restaurant staff had not heard of any current reports. Time and conditions, 11 p.m. and again 3 a.m. Environment, rest stop by freeway, next to a steep mountain hardwood forest, lightly forested. Cherry Creek rest stop. Follow-up investigation report by BFRO investigator Kevin Llewellyn, I talked to the witness by phone. He was sleeping under his pickup canopy with the windows open. At 11 p.m., when he first heard brush breaking, he thought it was a large animal such as an elk making crunching sounds as it walked. The knock was very clear and sounded like a bat hitting a telephone pole or tree. 
At around 3 a.m., he heard brush breaking and single wood knocks in two different locations. He thought one was maybe 150 yards away. He said, I thought about it too much, for 15 minutes, and then left. He did not hear any vocalizations. The witness is not aware of any caves nearby, but there is a huge rim rock above on the steep mountain. This rest area is on the edge of Caribou National Forest. There is farmland on the west side of I-15. The witness does not know of any orchards, just different crops. The witness is an avid hunter and spends much time in the woods. Thirty years earlier, he heard two knocks early in the morning that sounded the same as in this report. I find him very credible. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe below so we can expand our Squatch search with your help. If you do have an encounter to tell, send to SoCal Sasquatch Organization at gmail.com. We now have SCSO Keep On Squatching t shirts available. See link in the description below. Join the community and show it off wherever you go. Report number 58251 Class Alpha. Submitted by witness on Saturday, September 23, 2017. Wife and husband find tracks, have afternoon sighting near Hell Roaring Ridge. Year 2017, season fall, month September, date 9-22-2017, state Idaho, county Bonner County. Nearest town, Samuels. Nearest road, Pack River Road. Observed. My husband has been working logging in the Hill Roaring Canyon on Pack River for the last two weeks. One day he texted me saying, this is the first day I don't feel alone up here. My husband and I are avid hunters and enjoy our mountain time. The next day I ended up going to work with him. Later on we decided to go for a walk down an old dirt road that isn't accessed with a key to the gate. We came across what appears to be a large footprint. My husband wears a size 12 and this print was a few inches bigger. I have a photo. We never seen or heard anything else that day. On September 22nd we decided to go bear hunting on the other side of the mountain. We also had a key for that gate. We drove in 11 miles and to the left of me there's an old clear cut but saplings growing and must be at least 10 to 15 feet tall. I see something black and standing tall and moving through these trees. I yell at my husband to stop and this black figure is gone. I can't find it anywhere. We continue driving, no luck at all, don't even see a deer. We decide to turn around and go back in this same exact spot, which is now on my husband's side. He slams on the brakes and says, What the hell is that? Give me the gun. I hand the gun and lean over to him to see what he's looking at. It's a tall black figure with a head, no ears, very wide shoulders, and couldn't see the bottom part there. There was a tree in the way. He stares back and takes a step to the left behind a tree. All this happened within 40 seconds or so. He vanishes again. At this point, I have tears in my eyes and scared to death. My husband was sick to his stomach. Almost to the point of being sick, we were both so confused on what just happened. We started driving and about 400 yards up the road on his side again, he seen something move at, at, the, at the corner of his eye. He looked quickly and these branches on these trees about seven feet high were moving right in a row like something very tall had just ran through pushing them out of its way. We are positive, 100% positive this wasn't a bear or person. We are convinced what we seen last night was, had to have been, Bigfoot. Also noticed, we both thought it was odd we didn't see anything out, and the wildlife tracks we we did see were running. It could have been from us, or they could have been running from something else that we'll never know. Other witnesses, just myself and my husband. Other stories, we have two tracks, one from this year and one from a year ago in this area. Also, there was a logger that said he couldn't wait to leave that area. He never felt like he was alone. 
time and conditions, I first seen it right around 545. My husband seen it, I'm thinking close to 620. It got dark at 643 and it wasn't quite dark yet. Things were still vis visible. Environment. This figure was in an old clear cut with freshly planted saplings about five years back or so. They were getting pretty tall. The rest of the area is super thick with timber and old cedar stumps about a mile away is Caribou Lake. Follow-up investigation report by BFRO investigator Kevin Llewellyn. I talked to the wife and husband by phone. The tracks and siding were behind locked gates. In October or November 2016, they found a track about 16 inches long and 6 to 7 inches wide, but was somewhat washed out. In September 2017, they found a similar track with five toes, no claws, that was two plus inches deep in drying mud. These tracks were one quarter to one half mile apart. They were about one mile from the siding. On September 22, 2017, while bear hunting, the wife saw for just one second, less than 100 yards away, a black upright figure move through the saplings. She estimates the figure was eight feet tall. She did not see arms swing. On the way back in the same location, the husband saw a black upright figure of similar height and shoulders three or more feet wide. It was 75 to 100 yards away, and he was amazed at the, um, at the mass of it. It had a rounded head with no ears and no snout. He did not see arms. He said there was no brown nose like a bear. He looked at it for 15 to 20 sec seconds when it stepped to its left behind a tamarack tree as if trying to hide. Tamarack western larch have short needles that turn yellow in the fall and the husband could still see the black figure standing motionless through the yellow buffs. He tried to look through his rifle scope, but in those couple of seconds of getting the rifle out of the window, the figure was gone. Just 10 seconds down the road, he saw branches moving 7 feet high. The side window was down the entire time, and he did not detect any odor. The husband grew up in northern Idaho. He has been a long-time avid hunter, including bear. As a logger, he is in the forest daily. He was confused at what he saw and was nauseated all the way back to the gate. He also becomes upset recalling the sighting. I find him credible. 